Hi and welcome. My name is Simsina. One of the most requested videos on my channel is how to make your own mesh from scratch. So I have this idea for minimalistic, well, like very simple furniture that I think would work perfectly for this tutorial. I really tried to make it as simple as possible and it is beginner friendly, but if anything's unclear at any point, feel free to pause the video to leave your questions in the comments below. Now we're starting this tutorial off with requirements. To follow this tutorial, you'll need three different programs. Sims for Studio, Blender for 3D meshing and 2D photo editing software. I'll provide all download links um, in the description below. We're starting our tutorial with Sims 4 Studio. So open Sims 4 Studio and then right here on their object, tick create 3D mesh. In the catalog, I'm going to choose this very simple end table, but like the higher one. Now make sure the table is selected and then click next. Right now I'm just saving the package file. Side note, all your mods that include CC as well should always be saved to your mods folder. Now after you saved it, you'll be brought here and to edit mesh, select meshes. Right here, I'm going to need to export my mesh so that I can edit it. If you open this, you can see that there are several different options. Now I'm going to select the one with the lowest, LOD. LOD stands for level of detail. And what this really means is if you zoom into the object in the game, um, what you're viewing is the high LOD or level of detail. And then the more you zoom out in the game, the lower the LOD gets. Right, so I selected the medium LOD because it is the lowest LOD for this object. And once I have it selected, I'm going to click export. What I'm exporting right now is my mesh as the blender file. You can save that one wherever you want, really. Once you've exported it, open your blender file. And this is what it looks like in blender. First, right here in the corner, figure out which part of the mesh is what. Now, as you see, there are three main parts of this mesh. First one is this white plane. Second are shadows. And the third is our table that we want to edit. So select that one and then go into edit mode. Now, while in edit mode, I'm going to select all. To select all, you can simply press A on your keyboard. Now I'm going to move the whole table to the side by pulling it sideways with the red arrow. I moved it away uh, just so that I can make my own mesh right here, but I didn't delete it just yet because I'm going to use it as reference. And now I'm going to start modeling the table. Now this is going to be very simple, like I said, very plain table, just to get an idea of how all of this works. So while still in edit mode, go to create. As you can see, there are like several pre-made shapes here and we're going to select cube. And then this huge cube pops up. So I'm going to make this cube my table top by moving it around and scaling it until I get the exact table top that I want. So first I'm moving it to the center using the red arrow. Then I'm going to make it smaller by using the scaling option. You can activate scaling option by pressing S on your keyboard. Now, when you press S on your keyboard, as you may have noticed, it kind of automatically scales the whole object, but you can also choose if you want to scale your object horizontally, vertically, or uh, well, forwards and backwards. Now, first I want to scale it horizontally until I get it to the size that I want. So I'm doing that by activating scaling first. So press S on your keyboard. 
And then to activate horizontal scaling, I'm pressing X on my keyboard. As you can see, now I'm scaling my object horizontally. You see how this red line highlights after I pressed um, X? Well, this is a nice way Blender shows you on which axis you're working on. And as we pressed X, we're working on X axis. So it highlights it for you. After that, I'm going to need to scale it vertically to make it like thinner. And to do that, same thing as before. First, activate scaling option by pressing S on your keyboard. And then to enable vertical scaling, press Y on your keyboard. As you see, it automatically starts scaling it vertically or if you will, on the Y axis. The blue line is now highlighted, which indicates that I am working on Y axis or well, vertically. In order to get it to position as accurately as possible, I'm going to change my view of the object. So first I press one on my keyboard and the view changes. I'm zooming it in by pressing plus on my keyboard and I'm pulling it up using the blue arrow until I got my tabletop to a height of the table that I left for reference. Like the reference is happening now. After I've done that, I don't really need this EA's table anymore, so I'm going to delete it. While select by face is selected, I'm hovering over the object and pressing L on my keyboard until I got everything selected. To delete, press X on your keyboard and choose verticals. I'll go into the top view by selecting seven on my keyboard. So that way I can see my tabletop a little bit better. I'm just moving it on the Z axis or well, backwards and forwards by using the green arrow. After that, I'll scale it on the Z axis as well. Again, activate scaling first by pressing S on your keyboard and then press Z. I'm just playing around with it, resizing it until I'm happy with it. And my tabletop is done, but it's going to need some legs. Same thing as before. While in edit mode, I'm going to go to create and select cube again. I'm going to do with the legs exactly the same thing that I did with the tabletop. And I'm going to position my cube using different arrows and then scaling it by pressing S first and then pressing X on my keyboard to get it to scale on the X axis or horizontally. Then I'll scale it vertically by again, first pressing S to activate scaling and then pressing Y to move it on the Y axis or vertically. I'm using the arrows to move it where I'd like my first leg table to be. Now this looks great from the front view, but not from literally any other view. And to fix that, I'll need to go to the side view to get it to a position as accurately as I can. Now to go to the side view, you're going to press number three on your keyboard. And this is the side view. As you can see, I'm going to need to scale it on the Z axis, so the green line. So as before, activate scaling by pressing S on your keyboard and then press Z to scale the object on the Z axis. Once I'm done, I'm just going to move it to get it where I want my leg table to be. Again, just playing around with it. The way that I'm going to do the rest of the table legs is that I'm going to simply duplicate the table leg that I had just made. Now to duplicate, you can either select duplicate in the menu or keyboard shortcut would be um, shift plus D. Once you activate it, duplicate option, the object kind of just sticks to your mouse like this. To cancel this action, simply press escape on your keyboard. Now you can just position it where you want your new table leg to be. So again, I'm just pulling it using the arrows and positioning it where I am happy with it. To get to remaining two legs, 
I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Duplicating the existing legs and positioning them until I am happy. Feel free to go into different views to make sure everything is exactly where it should be. Hotkeys are number one for front view, number three for side view and seven for top view. Actually, all other numbers also activate different viewing positions. You can play around with different numbers to see what type of view you'd get by pressing each number. Once I'm done with all four legs and well, with the whole table really, I can save my file. Once saved, I can go back to The Sims 4 Studio and import my new mesh. Make sure you always import your new mesh to all LODs, so to all levels of detail. And this is your table. The shape is fine, but it's kind of um, gray. Well, this is because when you make your new mesh, you're going to also need to create your new 2D image map of the object. So that way you can create your own textures, colors, you know, swatches. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, have you ever seen, um, what's it called, um, like paper craft or something like that? Where you get this like paper model, something like this, and then you put it together to create a building or a house or whatever. Now, this is exactly what we need. We need this so that we can put it around our table. I hope that analogy made sense. In Blender, or well, in 3D modeling, this is something that's called UV mapping. And now the sad part is that we'll be doing this in my next tutorial. I have to split these videos to be able to upload consistently. Now, when I finish all parts of the certain tutorial, I'll upload them together as one larger video. I hope that's okay with you. So, next tutorial, UV mapping. If you guys find my tutorials helpful, you can support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. It doesn't really cost you anything and to me it really means a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next video.